So thank you. So uh, her subject is autochthonous literature, analyzing and critiquing notions of caste, class, and gender through the works of Prem Chand and Sadat Hassan Manto. Uh, and she uh, actually, and, and you come from, if I understand correctly, from Sadat Hassan Manto University of Delhi. Uh, yes, ma'am. What from is your institution? Bharti University College. of Delhi. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, actually, so please, was... I don't know if you can uh, start the camera as well. It would be useful to yes, see you. That's possible. Yes, ma'am. A very good afternoon please. to the respected faculty members uh, and my dear colleagues. I am Ravina Kohli, and the topic, as ma'am have already mentioned, is autochthonous literature, analyzing and critiquing notions of caste, class, gen and gender through works of Premchan and Sadat Hasan Manto. So firstly, I'll be coming on to the abstract, uh, which focuses on exploring conceptions of caste, class, hierarchy, and gender as presented through works of Premchan and Sadat Hasan Manto. The works that uh, are being taken into consideration are The Gift of a Cow or Godan and some stories of Manto, such as Kholdo and Smell. Particularly, there is attention given to portrayal and representation of women in the works of authors in question. The female success uh, was subjugated and repressed in earlier times, as we all know. So Manto empowers the females in most of his stories by uh, giving them authority and superior status as compared to the males. The female characters represented by Manto try to this heaven and unsettle the well-defined and uh, designated gender roles in the society in which they live. Uh, also, this line of thought will be discussed in detail. And the body of women being an instrument of internalization of suppression, uh, sorry, oppression and subjugation is the primary cause of concern that needs to be addressed through this paper. In Godan or the gift of a cow, there is reference to basic human goodness, which could lead to a change of heart uh, becoming a vehicle of change in society that is absolute. Uh, so Premchand also explores ideas of caste and class with respect to his novel in question. Uh, there is a vein of similarity between Premchand and Manto when it comes to treatment of the second sex. So now directly coming on to uh, representation of uh, Dhania, uh, who is the protagonist of uh, the novel Gift of a Cow. She's a woman uh, who resides in a village uh, with her husband, uh, Hori. So uh, uh, just, a second. just a minute. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would like to highlight that through the central character of Dhania, wife of the present farmer Hori, we can see embodiment of courage, honesty, generosity, self-sacrifice, and devotion to the roles of wife and mother. She is portrayed as a creature of flesh and blood with fiery temper, wit, undaunting courage, and intelligence. She refuses to be manipulated by village elders and fights like a lioness to protect her family. Wife beating is constant aspect of village life, as we are also dealing with representation of women, uh, particularly in villages of India. Punni is beaten by Hira, Dhania by Hori, and Junia by Gobar. Dhania courageously fights back and rebels. So uh, I am quoting her. You can't be called brave just for beating up the wife uh, you uh, took by the arm and brought home to cherish. You must think you can do whatever you like just because you feed me and clothe me? Well, from now on, you can take care of the house yourself. I'll stay right here in the village and shame you. Just you wait and see, and I'll be better fed and dressed than ever before. So in the above passage, we can clearly understand that she's threatening uh, her husband, Hori, and he's, uh, she's trying to shame him, which leaves him completely defeated, realizing the weakness and helplessness of a man when confronted by a woman. So now I'll also uh, try to highlight, uh, as uh, earlier also the, there has been mentioned about Manto's uh, short story titled Cold Meat or Thanda Wash. As highlighted by Trivedi, Manto brings into play time and again different sensory perceptions like the visual, the tactile and the olfactory. The sense of touch is evoked in Thanda Ghost or Cold Meat in which a man tries to rape a dead woman. 
His masterpiece is a short story titled "Boo" or "Smell," in which all the above mentioned sensory conceptions, uh, sorry, perceptions come together. At the beginning of the story, the hero enters into a sexual encounter with a stinking fisher woman, and later he gets married to a fair and perfumed upper class woman. He realizes that as they share bed, he is unable to perform in the absence of unadorned primitive odor. so there is a common motive of the naked woman flesh in common the flesh is repellent and unattractive it is unlike flesh but resembles meat and rubber so uh, manto have was also charged with obscenity trials uh, as we all know the naked flesh rouses not concupiscence but rather disgust it evokes a sense of distaste or something that puts off one uh, of engagement and enjoyment so now uh, quickly coming on to uh, one of the very important parts of uh, uh, frenchens novel when dhania gets to know that the cow named sundariya has been poisoned by hori's brother hira she quickly decides to hand him over to the police trouble help dhania rage i'm quoting her there is going to be more than trouble i won't rest until i have had him sent to jail i'll have him turning the grindstone for 3 years and when he gets out he'll be branded a murderer he'll have to take a pilgrimage and give a feast he is not going to get away with this atrocity and i'll get you swear on your son's head that you were an eye witness she went in and slammed the door hori lay there cursing himself if he hadn't been able to keep this to himself how could he expect dhania to that which wouldn't think of listening to him any longer so we see the portrayal of a uh, woman as presented by premchand in the uh, gift of a cow or godan uh, she has been presented as a figure of defiance she is rebellious and uh, that is quite pertinent it is clear from above passages that dhania was having a rebellious spirit and she decided to stand against hori and hira for the right cause she turned out to be a figure of courage perseverance and having sterling qualities with iron like will power even though she was being beaten by hori cruelly and brutally she stood her ground and also uh, with immense indomitable spirit unwavering in her decision getting beaten up for standing for the right cause was unjustified at all costs so uh, also i would also like to highlight uh, one of the stories of manto which is uh, titled khol do so uh, manto chooses metaphor of a woman to highlight gang rape of humanity that was a hallmark of 1947 as we all know uh, this is a story of a girl abducted from east punjab who is discovered by her father in a hospital where she lies in a traumatized state raped by her abductors as well as, well as rescuers so uh, quickly come quoting manto's voice in kholdo what happens is that the doctor glances at the body lying on the stretcher he checked its pulse and said to sirajuddin the window open it at the sounds of the words sakina's corks moved her dead hands undid her salwar and lowered it old sirajuddin cried with happiness she is alive my daughter is alive the doctor was drenched from head to toe in sweat Sakina suffered within the boundaries of Pakistan at the hands of Muslim volunteers. So, coming on to the other story titled "Smell" by Manto, he beautifully delineated women in a manner that excites disgust after touching human body, especially of a female. Um, Randhir inhaled a strange smell coming from her body all night. It was at once foul and sweet smelling, and he drank it in. From her armpits. her dress her hair and her back from everywhere it became part of every breath when he took randhir understood the smell that came from every pore of this marathi girl but he was unable to compare it to anything else like with the smell that comes from water uh, sprinkled on mud but no that smell was different in it there was nothing of the falsity of lavender and attar it was utterly real like the unifying relations between men and women real and immemorial so rumi highlighted the conception that manto's portrayal of women is explicit women have been subjected to humiliation and oppression at the hands of patriarchy through his works manto accentuated their plight 
and showed solidarity with their cause. Uh, coming on to the conclusion, uh, before the conclusion, there are two lines that I would like to you know talk about. Manto's stories be a testimony to the fact that how fallen humans stand up like a phoenix does from its ashes and muster up courage to lift themselves again. Through his works, Manto reaffirms humanism. The second sex reclaims humanity and showcases its destruction via political events, greed and misogyny that is perpetuated in the name of communal or nationalistic honor. So finally, I'm coming on to the conclusion. It can be easily deciphered from the above discussion that women have been subjected to violence, discrimination, oppression and cruelty from the times immemorial. They have stood up for themselves as we can see through Premchand's portrayal of immensely courageous Dhania in his work Godan and even Manto's delineation of females through his stories in question. No matter what, women power has played a tremendous role in empowering the fair sex. Manto has obliquely shown women's bodies in negative light for the readers to grasp and fathom the perspective of men when they scrutinize the female body. It is rightly said that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. The perspective plays an important role when it comes to portrayal of women in um, some of uh, Manto's short stories in question. Dhania decides to stand up for what is right even though she is subjected to physical violence and emotional abuse. Sakina, on the other hand, the heroine of the short story Koldo, embarrasses the men scrutinizing her as she lowers her salwar after being gang raped by hooligans. She dares to uncover her genitals to show or rather threaten the men that uh, examining her body after the rape incident. She is rather unabashed and unnerved. She is not ashamed of having a female body that runs as a symbol of defiance throughout the work. Nearing the closure, we can conclude that women have stood the test of times to stand up for noble cause with unrelenting courage, iron-like willpower and strength to be reckoned with. Thank you all of you. Thank you so much. So ma'am, uh, this is it. Thank you very much for your presentation, which obviously uh, continues this discussion about, you know, uh, social layers and the way the society can uh, rethink those boundaries yes, and uh, the need to open our minds uh, to towards everyone. And I think this comes out in literature as well as as a key issue. Uh, is there any question or comment 